Hello all, today we'll be talking about the formal charges of atoms. Today we'll be talking about the formal charges. Uh, I just want to quickly do this brief lecture because most of my students in GOB usually struggle with formal charges of atoms. So, the formal charge of an atom, just to put it simply, the way I put it, is that it's determined or calculated by using the formula. So formal charge, let's call it Fc. To calculate the formal charge of an atom, Fc, formal charge will be equal to, remember, in whenever an atom involves in a bonding, particularly in covalent bonding, they share electrons. That's what a covalent bond simply means, a pair of electrons. So atoms share a bond. And also, they can have some bonds too that they don't share, which is, of course, from the Vesper throw, we call the lone pairs. So the val so what we do is that to calculate the formal charge, we determine first the valence electron of that atom. Of course, this is determined by knowing the, the, the group in which the atom belongs, minus the sum of the number of dots. Dots, I mean this time is the number of electron dots. I'm not saying a pair, just the number of dots. So what it means a pair of electron means two dots plus the sum of the dots and the bonds around that particular atom. So the formal charge is, is with respect to individual atoms. Let's take some examples here. Let me start with an example of a hydronium ion. Hydronium ion, of course, if you draw the Lewis structure, it's going to look this way. This is what you're going to have in drawing the Lewis structure of hydronium ion. Now, one important selling point I need to add is that for you to draw, for you to calculate correctly the formal charge of an atom in a compound of ions or in any, in wherever you find the atom, you must make sure that the atom satisfies the octet rule. Now, if you look at this structure, one, because I want to find the charges, I didn't put the charge, automatically this is charge, which is the hydronium ion. Now, but if you look at this, Hydrogen always accepts just a single pair of electrons. So the, you will not always be bothered by bothered with the question to calculate the formal charge of hydrogen. No need. So we will never be calculating the formal charge of hydrogen. So hydrogen will be the exception because anytime it accepts a bond, it will always have those two electrons to itself. So hydrogen is an exception. So now in doing the formal charge of hydronium ion, the first thing we need to do is to make sure that all the atoms here satisfy the octet rule. Of course, we know that hydrogen, like I said, is always an exception. Hydrogen, once it has a one single bond, it satisfies the octet rule. So we need to worry about our oxygen. Let's look at this oxygen. So if you look at this oxygen now here, it has how many bonds? Remember, a single bond is equivalent to what? Two electrons. So let's remember that. A single bond, let me just try to make some notes here. A single bond simply means two electrons. Double bond means four electrons. And then triple bond, of course, remember, means what? Means six electrons. So this means a pair, two pairs, and and three pairs. That's exactly what I meant. So now, oxygen here has two, four, six, eight. It's not satisfied. So we have to put two electrons, two dots, to satisfy the octet rule. At times, too, I use dash to represent just two electrons. But in this case, because of the way I wrote this formula, the dot and the bond, I'm going to be using dot in this formula. So what will be the formal charge of oxygen? And how best can we write the Lewis structure of this with the charges? That's what we're going to figure out in this problem. So the first thing first, having done that, the formal charge, remember the formal charge is equal to the valence. The valence electron is determined by the group of that atom in the periodic table. So in calculating this oxygen, you can look at the periodic table. Oxygen is in group C of the periodic table. So it's going to be 6 minus, it has only electron of 6. The valence electron of oxygen is 6, or the number of electrons in the atom shell. The number of dots in this atom is how many? Two dots. Plus how many bonds does it have? It has 1, 2, 3. It has 3 bonds. So what are we going to do next? So 2 plus 3 is 5. So 6 minus 5 is going to give us what? Plus 1. So the formal charge on oxygen in hydronium ion is just plus one. Although that is why when you write it, remember all charged ions are written by their overall charge. So the overall charge on this is gonna be so this plus is actually resident 
on oxygen and not on the hydrogen. So you can always pause this video as I write the next example and you can try it yourself. So let's do the second problem I have here. The second thing I have here is another familiar one will be ammonium. So we're going to determine the formal charge on nitrogen. That's what we're going to do here. What will be the, we we'll determine the formal charge of nitrogen. And then we we'll now write the charge the way as overall charge is, as it's supposed to be written. So again, hydrogen is always an exception, like I said. Let's look at nitrogen. Nitrogen is in group five. Remember the formal charge formula again is equal to the number, the valence electron minus the number of the sum of the dot plus the bond in that atom. So again, I, nitrogen is in group five minus how many dots does it have? We're going to count here. It is satisfied two, four, six, eight. Nitrogen is fully satisfied here with the octet rule. So it's, it's obeying the octet rule. No need to add any dots anymore to make it satisfied. So, but if with that now it doesn't have any dots. So the dot it has is zero plus the number of bond is four. 0 plus 4 means 4. So 5 minus 4 gives you plus 1. So what that simply means is that the charge on this nitrogen is plus 1. And the best way to write the Lewis structure of ammonium ion is to put the overall charge in the square bracket. All right. Let's do other problems. You know, doing more problems makes you to be competent, particularly in solving chemistry problems. So I'm going to write this problem now, and I'm going to give you a few minutes to try it out yourself. So let's let, look at a molecule like this, a molecule this way. Although this will not be, yeah, I'm going to just draw the 2D Lewis structure. I'm not going to be drawing the 3D, whether it is bent or not, just for the purpose of the, for the purpose of formal charges. So... I will just, I'm just going to have it this way. So it will be your responsibility now to complete the octet and then calculate the formal charges of all the atoms here. So I'm going to pause for a few seconds and then I'll get back to it. Maybe 20 seconds. You can try it out yourself and then come back. Okay, we're back at it. Always feel free at any point in time to pause this video, try out these problems and come back to check for the answers yourself and for comprehension. So we have, okay, I'm going to use different color. We have two oxygens. There is one oxygen. There is two oxygen here. So I'm going to just lower the oxygen so it will be easy for me to identify the ones I'm going to do first. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the first oxygen. So the, for the first oxygen, that's what I'm going to be doing. So for the first oxygen, the first O, the formal charge, remember again, before I do that, I need to make sure that all these atoms satisfy the octet rule. So how do, what do I do? I have to make sure, use what? I have to use the dots or the long pairs to achieve that M. So what am I going to do? This one has two, four. So you need to start to, so I'm going to put two and two here. So here there are eight electrons around this oxygen again. What about this one? This one has only two, so I'm going to need three pairs, two, four, and six plus this eight. So, and then what about sulfur? Sulfur here is what? Two, four, six. So it's going to need another one. Remember, in the typical Vespa model, this bond is going to bend this molecule to be, to be what? A trigonal planar. But we're not talking about that for now. All right. So let's quickly do this problem. Now, the flex oxygen, which is the one to the left, what is it going to be? It has formal charge, of course, is again, formal charge is equal to the valence electron minus the sum of the dot plus the bond. So oxygen is in group six again, subtracted by the number of dots. The number of dots here is one, two, three, four, four dots plus how many electrons do we have here? How many bonds do we have here? Two. Four plus two is six. And if you say six minus six will give you zero. This oxygen here have no charge. So no need to put zero. Don't even put zero at all. It's not customary to do that because it is not... Oxygen always has to, wants to have two long pairs and two bonds. And whenever you see hydrogen having two long pairs and two bonds, automatically the formal charge is going to be zero. Now let's go to oxygen, the second one. The second oxygen. The second oxygen, again, oxygen is in group six. So it will be six minus. Uh, the number of dots here is two, four, six. 
6 plus, how many bonds does it have? 1. So 6 plus 1 is 7. So 6 minus 7 is going to give us negative 1. So the formal charge on this, on this oxygen atom is negative 1. And then we we'll now do the solve. What about the solve? For the solve, for solve is also in group 6 like oxygen. So it's going to be 6 minus. How many dots does it have? It has 2 dots plus. How many bonds? 1, 2, 3. It has 3 bonds. So it's going to be 6. This is 2 plus 3. So 6 minus 5 is going to give you plus 1. So here it is going to be plus 1. Now, if something interesting is happening here. If you look at it now. One atom has minus one, this one has plus one. So minus one plus one is going to cancel out and give zero. So the overall structure of this molecule is not going to have any change. So at the end of the day, the structure is good the way it is reading. It is good the, the way it is reading. Okay, I think, yeah. It is good the way it is written without having any charge on it, without having any charge on it and this is actually correct because this is the way we write this is so2 actually this is sulfur dioxide all right we go to the next example in the next example let's bring something even more that looks like a little bit of an organic molecule in the fourth problem here i'm going to give you something this way you just have oxygen floating at that point. What do you think? Again, hydrogen is really an exception. It has a complete, pair, a complete pair of electrons that it needs. So this oxygen is not satisfied. For us to do that, we have to complete it. So here it's going to take, whenever oxygen has one bond, it's going to take three long pairs. That's exactly what it is. So now the formal charge again of this oxygen is going to be, what is it going to be? Oxygen is in group six minus. The number of dots you have here is what? Two four six six dot plus one bond six minus this six plus one is seven six minus seven give you minus so here it is also negative one again that is exactly what that will give you all right let's take about two more problems again and we should be good for for this lecture this is just a brief lecture all right so let's do this one let me do this if I do this. Yeah, this is cyanide. Cyanide ion, actually. I'm not going to write what the charge is. We're going to try to find the formal charge on both nitrogen and carbon. So what are we going to do first? We make sure that both of those guys satisfy the octet through. What are we going to do first? Here, carbon is 2, 4, 6. It's not satisfied. we put 2 here and the same thing here. Both of them now have uh, 4 pairs of electrons or, or 8 electrons in total around each of them. So the next thing we do is to that of carbon. What are we going to do? Carbon is in group 4. Carbon is in group 4. So it's going to be the valence electron of carbon minus the number of dots. How many dots does it have? It has 2 dots plus how many bonds? 1, 2, 3. It has 3 bonds. So this is 2 plus 3 is 5. 4 minus 5 to give us minus 1. So that means the charge here is negative or you say negative 1. It doesn't matter. And then what about nitrogen? Nitrogen here is in group 5. To be 5 minus, it also has 2 dots and 3 bonds like carbon. 5 minus 5 will give you 0. There's no charge. So the overall charge on the cyanide ion is actually resident on carbon. And when we actually draw it, this is the way it looks like. That is the way you will draw uh, the Lewis structure of cyanide ion. You can always pause this video and try out these problems yourself. So I'm going to be doing the last one, but not the least, is the nitrite, the, the nitrate ion. The nitrate ion uh, is what I'm going to be doing now. So let me go back. Okay, that will be in the number six. So the sixth example I'm going to be doing here will be the nitrate ion. So it's going to be N. I'm going to draw it. So I'm going to put it this way. So now we're going to find the what the formal charge on each of all these atoms. So I have how many oxygens there? I'm going to label them. I have the first oxygen here, one, two, and three. So I label them so that it will not be confusing the one I'm going to do first. The first thing we need to do, we make sure that each of these atoms satisfy the octet through. What are we going to do? This one has two. 
So I'm going to add what here? I'm going to add just two pairs of electrons or four electrons. Two, four, six, eight. Okay. This one is going to accept three pairs. This is also going to accept three pairs. So what, what this tells you is that the lone pair um, on oxygen 3 and oxygen 2 is going to be the same thing. Oxygen 2 and 3 is going to be the same thing. So we need to worry out with the first one. So let's start. In the first oxygen, let's solve our problem. In the first oxygen, oxygen is in group 6 again. We'll subtract it from the number of dots and bonds. How many dots does it have? It has 4 plus the number of bonds here, 2. 4 plus 2 is 6. 6 minus 6 will give you 0. This is not charged. So we're going to leave it. Now, what about, so the second and third oxygen will be the same thing. We know because they have just single bonds on them and three pairs of electrons. So, again, it's in group 6. And then, to be 6 minus, how many dots does it have? 6, 2, 4, 6. 6 dot plus 1 bond. So, which is 7, 6 minus 7 will give you minus 1. So, this guy is going to be just minus 1. This will be minus 1. Or you just say minus if you don't want to put 1. That's okay. It's, it doesn't matter. And then let's do the, the nitrogen, which is what we're going to be doing last at this point. Okay, so nitrogen, that's what we're going to be doing now. For the nitrogen, it's going to be nitrogen is in group 5 again. Remember that? Okay, move this thing a little bit too far from the rest. So I'm going to make it close. Okay. Nitrogen is in group 5. Use the periodic table to figure that out. Minus. Now, how many? It doesn't have any dot. The dot is 0. Plus. How many? Remember, it has 4 bonds, which means the octet will satisfy. So this 2, 4, 6, 8 is okay. So we're going to have plus 4. Five, so 0 plus 1 means 4. So 5 minus 4 gives you plus 1. So at the end of the day, you have 1 plus, so you can say plus 1, it doesn't matter. Now, this is all what you have. These two oxygen has negative 1, negative 1. This one has 0, no charge, whereas the nitrogen has two. So to write the Lewis structure overall, what are you going to have? The, the charges are going to balance, going to try to balance themselves or cancel out. But they can't cancel out here. So what are you going to have overall? You have minus 1, minus 1 will give you minus 2 plus 1 on this nitrogen. So this minus 2 plus 1 gives you minus 1. So the overall, this molecule is going to have a balance of what? It's going to have a balance of what? Of negative 1 charge when you draw it overall. So it's going to be just this. That's why the nitrate ion is usually negative, negatively charged. Thank you once again for listening and do have a great day ahead of you and bye at this point.